So we're looking to create a user form to help the user manage a database, to add new entries to a database and to edit existing entries in a database. So far, we've created a user form. Then we put some controls on that user form. And next, we've got to think about how do we get it working for us? So the user can put some information in, but we've got to do something with that information. We've got to get it into the database and we're going to do that using some VBA code. But before we get deep into the coding, I just want to cover a few things about really optimizing this user form, getting it working really smoothly for us, because there's nothing worse really than a user form that looks good, but is difficult to use. Maybe the tab order isn't right, so you can't move through the user form properly. Maybe the drop down menus aren't properly configured. So what do we need to cover to ensure that the user form is as efficient as it possibly can be because a user form that isn't efficient can really frustrate a user. The user will probably rather just interact with the spreadsheet without the user form. So that's the purpose of this video. What are the things we need to bear in mind to really get this user form working well? Let's get into the spreadsheet. So since the previous video, I've built up the user form. I've got all the controls in there. You can see for every column in the database, or at least most of the columns in the database, we're collecting some information via the user form. I've configured all of the combo boxes as well. So this is looking pretty good, but there's a few things we need to do in order to get this working uh, as efficiently as possible. The first thing I can see is I'd like a meaningful caption in the top left hand corner uh, for the user form that will just tell the user what to do. Currently it says user form one, not very useful. So let's sort that out straight away, going into the visual basic editor, making sure I'm in the right file. And I want to change this caption here. So I click on the user form and go down to the properties in the bottom left corner. Remember the properties area is where we can manage the user form, get it behaving as we want it, as we want it to behave. Then in the caption box here, I'm going to type in as new. Now that seems to be a sensible caption because the user form is allowing the user to add somebody new to the database. So this seems to be appropriate. Let's give it a quick test. This is looking uh, much better already. I think we've got a, a meaningful caption in the top right hand corner. What else could we do to really get this as efficient as possible? Well, I'd like to see some default values in these boxes. That's going to save the user some time. So how can we put default values in? Well, let's go back to the Visual Basic Editor, back to the user form in gender, for example. I'd like to have a default value. So let's click on that control. Again, we're going to be interacting with the properties area down at the bottom. And then in value down here, I'm going to type in F. So F for female becomes the default value. The same with region going to type in south, so that becomes the default value. Job status, I'm going to type in employed uh, for the default value. Then what else can we do? Marital status, let's type in single there for the default value. Smoking status, let's type in no there for the default value. Exercise status is a, is a free text input, so I won't put anything in there. Driving status, let's type in no again uh, for the default value. So now we've got some values appearing here. Let's go back to the spreadsheet, and just test that, click the add button. We can see we've got some default values appearing now. So this again is going to help save the user time. We've, we can still use these uh, free text boxes here. So this is looking looking better. It's getting to the stage where I want it to be, where I will be confident handing it over to a client. I only put user forms in if I'm absolutely sure they're optimized, working as, as best they can and that they won't cause frustration uh, for the customer. So what else can we do? Well, I'd like what we want to work towards. The ideal is the user doesn't have to use the mouse at all in order to work through the user form. Now, if the user can tab through the user form using the tab key, that can minimize the need to use the mouse. But we can see at the moment, I'm hitting the tab key. Yeah, some places the order's okay. In other places, the order 
is not too good. So how can we get this tab order accurate so the user can just tab through the user form? Again, back to the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to click on the first um, text box here, and then we're looking at a property which is tab index. Tab index. Now, I want this first text box to be the first box that Excel will tab to. So I'm just going to put one in the tab index there, then work through the, the, the rest of the user form. Surname, I want to be number two on the tab index, age, number three, currently number 11, gender, number four, there we go, region, number five. I am going to complete this <laughs> in the video, but if you want to skip on through the video, you're welcome to do that. Job status, I think we're up to number six in the tab index. I'm just going to give that a test halfway through. So now I can hit the tab key. You can see the cursor going through the boxes there. So job status, I think, was seven, but I'm going to check that. Tab index five. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Okay, I'm just ah, I'm looking at the wrong user form as you can see. So job status on the right user form now. Job status tab index six one two three four five six. That makes sense. So marital status has got to be tab index seven, currently sixteen, and then let's make this option. This checkbox eight, the other checkbox nine, smoking status ten, on the tab index exercise status eleven, driving status twelve, almost there, and then continue button, the command button, tab index thirteen. Cancel button, tab index 14. There we go. So now back to the spreadsheet, bring up the user form, and you can see the cursor's there ready to go. The user doesn't have to click in that box. Cursor's there ready to go. Might sound like a kind of detailed point, but if you're doing a lot of data entry, this kind of thing's going to make a real difference. And I can hit the tab key, tabbing through the boxes, and I'm getting to a situation where I can just use the keyboard in order to do this data entry. Very nice. So there we're talking about the tab, the tab index property. Also done default values. And so let's quickly let's let's go into the code a little bit at this point because this cancel button, I want to be able to click that, and I wanted to, want to be able to just for the user form to close. I want the cancel button to close the user form. So let's make that happen. So you'll remember from the first video in the series, if we double click on a command button, I'm going to double click on this command button. It will take us to the uh, coding area, the code that's associated with this object, with this user form. Here we can control what code runs when we click on a button. The name of this button is command button two. So that's the name of the routine. What happens when we click? command button. So you remember this code from the first video. And all I want to do is unload the user form. I've got some pre-existing code there that I can recycle. Always a good idea to recycle code that you know is working. So we've got some code there in this routine. So let's go back to the spreadsheet, do a test, just hit the cancel button and the user form disappears there. So this seems to be working well. So I'm happy I've optimized this user form, tab through, easy to do uh, the data entry. I can use the alt and down cursors to, to select from menus as well. So I'm happy that this is almost as good as it can be in terms of the efficiency. Now there's a few other things we have to do to prepare 
for the coding. Remember, we've got a nice user form now, but it's not actually doing anything for us yet. We want to be able to click the continue button and then for Excel to take this information in the user form from the boxes and put it into the right part of the database. Create a new entry at the bottom, make sure all of the information from the boxes is going into the right columns. Now that's quite a complicated procedure. We need to make sure we prepare well so that we don't get into a coding tangle. Now, a good preparatory step to take that is not absolutely essential, but I recommend is to make sure you name each, anything that's gonna take text from the user, give it a meaningful name. That's really gonna help us understand and remember what each of these boxes are doing. For example, this text box, the name is text box, text box one. That's the default name, it's not very informative doesn't tell us what the text box does. So I'm going to go through, I don't think I'll do this in the video, but I'll do a few now. I'm going to go through and this text box, I'm going to say text first because it's a text box for the first name. I'm going to move on to the next uh, text box. So this is going to be text underscore surname. And I'll go through the others too. For the combo boxes, let's say combo underscore gender. Okay, and then for the options, option buttons, I'm going to say option underscore yes, wife a yes, underscore child, because the question is about children. So it's a good idea at this point to go through anything that's going to be receiving an input from the user, so the text boxes, the combo boxes, and the option button, and any other controls you may have, go through, give them meaningful names now. That may sound like a boring and unnecessary task, but when we get onto the coding, in the next video, we're going to get onto the coding. It's quite a sophisticated piece of coding to get the information into the database. It's going to really help us do that coding, because it's quite a complicated task. It's good to have all of these controls named with precision and that's going to allow us to do the referencing much easier. We're going to make the coding as easy as possible because it's bound to get complicated at some point. Okay, so that's as far as we're going to go in this video. We've optimized the user form. For me, very frustrating to have a user form in a spreadsheet that isn't working perfectly. A user form that is more frustrating than helpful, you know, we definitely want to avoid that. So there's some important things to do, managing the tab control, putting some default values in there, um, giving the user form a name so it doesn't just say, giving it a caption rather, so it doesn't just say user form one. All of these things help to maximize efficiency, gonna make your customer, uh, external, internal customer, whoever it might be, as happy as they can be uh, with what you're doing. And then we've thought about preparation for coding. We've said it's a good idea to give the main elements that are going to be involved in the coding, all of the boxes in the user form, to give those meaningful names. That's what we're going to get onto in the next video, getting this information from the user form into the database. To do that, we're going to have to get into the Visual Basic coding. I'll see you in the next video.